Hello. Look at this picture. What do you see? Just think about that. For sure you see water. <laughs> yeah, we can see water. Let me tell you what's happening. Suppose we throw a stone into a lake. Before we do that, the lake is in equilibrium. When we throw the stone, a stone collides with the surface of the water, right? So as you see here, the water produces ripples. Ripples die out after some time, and the stone sinks, and the water is back to its steady state condition. Today, we are going to learn about transient processes. We have learned a little on chapter 4 of the book, of our uh, reference book, which is Elementary Principles of Chem Processes. But today, we are going to learn, we are in chapter 10, and we are going to learn about the, um, we are going to review the transient state and the accumulation concept. And then we are going to learn about the general procedure for solving a transient material balance equation. Whatever we have learned so far, all of them, they were about the steady state, right? So now we want to know, okay, we have a transient state, like the example that you have seen. So how can we solve that? How can we write equation, material balance equation for that one? Why we want to learn these ones? For two objectives. First, we want to know the difference between the transient states and the steady states. Why know that, okay, what about the accumulation? Do we have accumulation in a steady state? If we don't have it, what about transient one? Do we have it? Um, if we have accumulation term in the transient state, how can we calculate that? And then we want to learn about the general procedure for solving the uh, material balance equation when we have transient state. Why? Because on Monday, we're going to have fun in the class. We're going to work on the work on another experiment um, of the processes. And we are going to see the transient processes in front of us. And then we want to solve that. We want to write down the equation. So we need to learn about the general procedure for that one. Transient processes, OK. Whenever the value of any variable changes with time, we have transient process, as you have learned in the chapter four. When we say process variables, we mean pressure, temperature, volume, concentration, conversion in reactions, or mass flow, mole flow, uh, volume flow. All of these ones are the process variables. Let's have some examples of the unsteady state or transient ones. Level of a tank, if it change. If the concentration change um, in our reactions, if we have a change of pressure or temperature or even density in our system, um, let's think about an example. Let's have an example. For example, distillation column. If we change the temperature, if we increase the temperature in the boiler, definitely our pro it is going to affect our um, products. Or in pharmaceutical, if we change the density of the feed, in that case, definitely. And it's very critical, right? So we need to find out the mm, equations for these ones. We need to solve them. We can't say these are a steady state. We have the terms of T. It's, it's changing over T. Another example. Look at this. I'm sure all of us, we have this experience. When you go to, the sh to take a shower, at the beginning, you turn on the tap. I mean, you just try to have some water and it's cold, right? And then you try more and you will have hot water and you're like this, oh my God, so I have to, you have to just mm, work on that a little until you reach your comfortable temperature for your body. From the beginning until you reach that, we call it transient, we are in the transient state. Next example. We have a tank, we want to fill it with the water. So the, at the beginning, the water level changes over time. We are in the transient state. Why it changes over time? Just think about that. Because the flow rate that goes in is not equal 
to the flow rate of the water that goes out. But after some times, these two flow rates are the same, so the water level remains to be, the con to be constant, and we call it a steady state. Another example, Lake Erie, Lake Ontario, Niagara River. Let's say we have some contamination. We want to see what will happen. So this is just considered as a sample of some part of this river, uh, Niagara River. So when the contamination happened, it just go, have you, you have seen that, right? So it's just like passing and it's not, you can't say that it's a steady, it's on a steady state, it's transient. And you see that all the contaminant that comes, for example, if it's the, this is a fourth area sampling station in real, for reality. And uh, this is the Niagara on the lake sampling station. So we can get the samples and um, find out the concentration of the uh, pollution in the water. Uh, and look at this, it comes here and even it can affect Hamilton, right? Here. So it's very important that, for example, what would be the concentration? How long does it go? Is that one day, two days? How long do we have to fix it, right? So it's very important. The typical process for transient state, they're batch or semi-batch. But we can't say all the transient states are batch or semi-batch. Even continuous processes, they start as transient. If something change in the operating condition, we're going to have a transient. It's like on a steady state, right? If we have some um, disturbance or abnormal situation, then um, we are going to have transient. And it, for sure, when we want to shut it down, the concept of accumulation. Look at this. Just the water flows to a tank. No water goes out of the tank. So what's happened for the process variables? Level increase, right? Volume increase, mass content with increase, and for sure the mole ones, mole number of the moles will increase as well, right? So we have the, this is like accumulation of this one. Another example, water comes in, water goes out. You have seen this example like a few slides ago. So we have again, um, depends on the flow rate that comes in we are, and out. So we are going to have accumulation. So the, the level of the water in the tank is changing. So when it's transient, the accumulation is not zero. When we were working on the steady state, the accumulation was zero all the time, right? Whatever com was coming in, it was equal to whatever was going out. But here, since the accumulation changes in time, it generally turns to be a derivatives. We're going to see why we call it dm over dt. But before that one, when we don't have change um, over time, when we don't have derivatives uh, for a steady state, a steady state <laughs> is algebraic equation. But after that, when we are in the transient and we have dm over dt as accumulation, so we have differential equations. First order differential equation, okay, let's say piece of cake, we are going to solve it by hand. But second order differential equations, we're going to need computer for that ones, right? Um, or let's say third order, fourth order um, differential equations. So we would need computer. There are many software outside that um, we can work with them like Polymath. Now, we want to analyze the differential balance and integral balance. When we say differential balance, it relates instantaneous rates of change at a moment in time. It's at a moment in a time. But when we say integral balance, it relates change that occur over a finite time period. For example, from the beginning until the end of the um, process. And for sure, we need a methodology for transient state, similar that we had for a steady state. So differential mass balance, we say mass of a species, let's say species A, for example, in a system change by an amount of delta M. So we say delta M is equal to mass in plus um, rate of generation minus mass out minus 
rate of consumption in that interval, times that interval, right? Um, so if we look at that this equation, delta time is equal to this. Let's say we divide it by delta t. So we are going to have delta m over delta t. It's equal to m dot in plus r dot generation minus m dot out minus r dot consumption times delta t over delta t. So, and let's say if our delta t is very, um, for a very short period of time, it's very small. So it's equal, um, it goes to the zero. We can say that we can change it to derivative, right? It's derivative definition. So we can say dm over dt is equal to mass in, mass failure rate that we have in, and then the um, rate of the generation, mass failure rate that goes out of the system, and rate of the consumption. For sure, we need a boundary condition to solve this um, differential mass balance equation. And why we, do we need the boundary condition? Because when we want to integrate the differential equation, between initial and final conditions, so we need to need we need to know these numbers, right? Um, and then, after doing these things, we are going to have the integral mass balance. So we have dm over dt. We had it from the previous slide. Let's multiply it by dt everywhere, and then we can say for after doing the integration. So when we integrate that, we can say that from the time zero to the final time, dm is equal to m at the final moment minus the m at the initial moment. And then we just integrate all of these components, all of these terms. So we're going to have, and with the same, our time is changing, right? So with the same integral uh, boundaries. Now, general procedure for um, transient processes. First of all, we want to eliminate terms in general balance equation that it's equal to zero. For example, if we don't have um, any reaction, so we won't have any generation or consumption, right? So look at this picture here, a little time. It, we have flow in and flow out. Do we have consumption? No. Do we have rate of generation? There is no, it's just water. There's no reaction here. So it's going to be, we, we're going to eliminate them, equal them to the zero. And then we want to write an expression for the total amount of the balance species in the system. So we are going to choose a species. For example, we would say that a species A, and then we are going to write down, write down the balance equation for that. And then we are going to substitute system variables into the remaining terms. Um, here we need to be careful. We want to make sure that all the terms that we have, they have the same unit. If we are writing the mole balance, we, may, we, we need to make sure that everything is in, for example, mole per second. It should be in the mole one. And if we are writing the mass balance, we want to make sure that the, every, all, um, all the units are the same, for example, kilogram, kilogram per second. Step four is that if yt is dependent variables to be determined, we want to rewrite the equation to obtain an expression for dy over dt, right? So we want to say dy over dt. Let's say we want to see how concent concentration go. Then we would say dc over dt, right? And the, we want to make sure that we rewrite the equation and then we solve the equation. And our preference in our class is analytically. We want to do that in the class. We want to have fun, right? Otherwise, if it was second order uh, or more than that, we are going to do that numerically. Number six, step six, is that we want to check the solution. We want to verify our solution, right? And number seven, we want to use our solution to generate a plot of the y versus t. If it was concentration, we want to have the trend, we want to have the plot to see 
how does it look like look like so what's the effect of this transient uh, process on uh, on that specific um, variables that is changing we want to see how does it change over time that later we could decide what should we do next for example um, on that contaminant um, example we wanted to know that okay and here oh and here is the part that later in your fourth year you are going to learn about the feedback control processes and those ones so we need to see these ones first so let's look at the concept map we review the transient state, accumulation concept, material balance, general procedure for solving a transient material balance equation. On Monday in the class, we are working, we are going to work on the case study like this person. If you need to go back and look at this video again and again, feel free to do that. And on Monday, we are going to review these things as well. And remember the online quiz that we have always for our posted videos. Make sure you are going to go to this um, link um, and do the online quizzes before coming to the class on Monday. And see you on class on Monday.